Government social welfare system has certainly been central to the debate around government spending decisions. Let's speak about the economic effects that come with this and bring in our next guest. He's a client partner at IQ Business, that's Sakani Kazo, who joins us via our video link this morning. And uh, thanks very much indeed for your time. So welcome to the SABC News Channel. Perhaps let me just get your broad stroke take on whether or not you reckon enough focus has been provided on these social welfare systems, including perhaps the SRD grant. Yeah, well, thank you and morning to, to, to your viewers. I think just the decision to end the social relief of distress grant in South Africa is a very, very complex one. Um, it's influenced by several interlock interlocking economic and fiscal factors. And the grant itself was initially introduced as a temporary measure in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, which provided crucial support to individuals and families who found themselves without income due to the economic shutdown. However, as South Africa embarks on economic recovery, there's an emphasis on restructuring resources towards sustainable economic growth, job creation, and reducing the strain on the national budget, as we've seen yesterday. And persistent fiscal constraints, rising debt levels, and the need to allocate resources towards long-term growth initiatives have thus influenced the decision to conclude the grant thus far. Right. Although, I mean, in many instances, you know, as you rightly mentioned, um, this uh, social relief of distress grant was only seen as a temporary measure. If we're thinking about a more sustainable way of shielding people from economic hardships, for lack of a better term, there needs to be those structural reforms we've always spoken about, ways through which jobs can be created so that people can earn their own money and in that way contribute to the growth of the economy. Correct, correct, correct. And, and the government is actively exploring alternative social support mechanisms um, to cushion the impact on those who relied on the SRD grant. I mean, this includes strengthening existing social assistance programs such as the child support grant and the old age, age pension, while also considering adjustments to unemployment benefits for greater inclusivity. There's also a focus on job creation initiatives, public works programs and targeted skills training to help individuals transition to stable employment. And these measures aim to create longer term foundation for economic security and ultimately reducing dependency on short term relief. Where do you reckon this leaves the debate around the basic income crowd? In some ways, the SRD was seen as a step towards that direction. But I wonder if you reckon we're now changing directions completely. Um, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say we're changing um, direction completely. I mean, in essence, the grant's effectiveness in addressing poverty and vulnerability has been acknowledged. And there's an ongoing dialogue around potential universal basic income grant, which would be more sustainable if implemented within the country's fiscal parameters. I mean, any, any decision to reinstate or modify such grants will be based on careful monitoring of economic indicators, fiscal health and social needs. I mean, if essentially, if external economic pressures like rising unemployment um, continue to be impacted, I mean, government will have to get, get back to the drawing board in terms of how we proceed. Right. I know there's, of course, people on the other side of this debate who are suggesting that these kind of social welfare mechanisms only deepen dependence on the state. What's your response to that? I, my understanding is that, of course, the, the numbers tell a very different story. Yeah, I think ultimately, as a strategy, and I mean, as, as government's outlook, we try to to move away from, from social dependency, and particularly with the SRD grant, because it was implemented as a short-term relief, there are other mechanisms that government are really looking at to try address those who might find themselves in a position where they're not able to access that grant and now can actually, you know, um, find other alternatives in order to to, to actually um, ensure long-term long sustainability, um, as opposed to short-term relief grants as per the SRD grant was aligned to do. Yeah, I've, I've found, um, you know, conversations around broadening the basket of zero VAT, uh, zero rated VAT items. I think I've got that mixed up, but you know what I mean? I found that yes. discussion very interesting because I wonder how far you reckon something like that would go in order to cushion the blow for most vulnerable communities. Yeah, definitely it would cushion the blow. I mean, if we look at the basket of goods, I mean, you're looking at things like bread, which are quite essential to, to the lower income end of our economy. And I mean, the position we find ourselves in, I mean, we've got high 
high unemployment at this stage, which, you know, is something that we'd need to relook at to try, you know, boost, you know, our economic recovery. But, you know, extending that from the border basket and actually having, you know, zero-based, you know, taxes on things like that um, would go a long way in terms of stretching the, the, the disposable income for, for, for our, our broader citizens. Yeah. Who decides, though, what items ultimately make it into this broader basket? I wonder what kind of considerations you reckon should be made insofar as that's concerned. Yeah, in terms of the decision itself, I mean, of course, that would fall within, you know, you know, our Reserve Bank, um, you know, who have to sort of also have targeted inflation, um, you know, and also things like that that have to understand the mechanisms and the levers that would sort of drive the economic growth. But in terms of my suggestions, I think, um, you know, I agree in the decision in terms of, you know, trying to broaden that basket because um, if, you know, we find ourselves in a position where fuel um, is increasing, um, we're finding food costs, you know, being unattainable for the general man on the street. Um, you know, we find them in a position where now we have to combat things like hunger, um, you know, which is, of course, a, 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 another huge challenge that we're already currently facing. Yeah. I often hear economists speaking about the multiply effect, this idea that if people have money to spend, hopefully they do spend it. And that in some ways drives economic growth by increasing GDP, et cetera, et cetera. Is this kind of social welfare, and I'm talking about the SRD grant, targeted Correct. enough in order for us to maximize on something like that? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, the SRD grant has significant impact, I mean, on vulnerable populations. I mean, it served as an economic lifeline for, for millions of individuals, particularly the low income community, communities who faced food insecurity and poverty. I mean, by providing direct cash, cash transfers, the grant not only addressed immediate needs, but also stimulated local economies by increasing consumer spending in small businesses and informal markets. I mean, in many cases, the SRD grant helped individuals stabilize financially, but temporarily, which was crucial for maintaining social stability amid the pandemic-induced economic challenges. Absolutely. And one wonders what we'll make of that social stability if this kind of relief were to be ended indefinitely. But I suppose we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Sakani Kazo, great speaking to you. Thanks so much for your time and your insights. Thank Sakani you so much. Sakani is a, a client partner with IQ Business once again. Thanks very much indeed.